Hey, it's Styles from Brand Content Studios. Here's your content marketing quickie for the week of January 14th, 2020. Hey, YouTube, Tubi McTuberson. I don't have to tell you how powerful video is, and I don't have to tell you what a big deal YouTube is as a platform, and I don't have to tell you I still sleep with a large stuffed rabbit because that's my business. But occasionally, I like to take you to YouTube school just to make sure you're getting the most out of it. This time, I do that by telling you what social media examiner's Michael Stelsner found out when he interviewed Sean Cannell, author of YouTube Secrets. Why should you be serious about YouTube? It's a social network. It's the number one video platform. It's the second most visited website that there is, and it's the second largest search engine that there is. Consumption is only going up on every device, and 68% of humans use it to get questions answered, exactly the thing we marketers are trying to accomplish. Thusly, Here's what Sean thinks you should know about YouTube. Content lives and works for you there way longer, as opposed to the here today, gone in two minutes, catch me if you can nature of the other social networks. So it's worth bigger investments. Use it to build your brand, not sell your crap. You don't buy Nike because they had a great Facebook ad. You buy it because you know and trust the brand. And they've built that awareness and trust over decades. In fact, Sean says, maybe have only 10% of your videos send people off of YouTube to your site. That doesn't feel right. But... If you make them curious, they'll seek you out. And that is a much, much better dynamic. Matt Guilin from Little Monster Media studied the YouTube algorithm and found out that channels that have one clear value proposition perform much better and get recommended more often. If you're desperate to talk about another value proposition or topic, Start a second channel versus muddying up the waters. Do you want YouTube to love you? Sure you do. You're standing there like Julia Roberts in Notting Hill. I'm just a marketer asking a technology platform to love them. Well, YouTube loves it when you bring people to the platform and keep them there a long time. Use your email list and social to drive people to your channel. Make them stay with more content because that whole session time, even if they aren't your videos, is attributed to you. Did you know that? I know you want to drive everyone immediately to your website, but if you help YouTube, it will help you. And Sean says, you've got to post consistently. All right, now what does that mean? One a week at minimum. Preferably three a week with 48 hours in between so they all have a shot at getting recommended by YouTube. Finally, watch your metrics. The ones that matter are click-through rate, YouTube Studio tells you the average CTR on your channel and each video. So make sure that title and thumbnail is perfecto. Change, test, and tweak. Because making changes does not cause Google to re-index that video. View velocity, or how fast your video gets views in the first three hours after you publish, signal to YouTube if it's worth spreading or not. Average view duration is how long they watch your videos. If you can get over 50%, that is awesome. Watch time is the total time people spend with your videos overall. And pay attention to session duration by making either longer form content 
or episodic sequences of shorter form content to keep them hooked. You want to get binge watched. Not enough, not nearly enough, people think about content in the context of internal communication. But it's pretty vital because we've all been in organizations that make a lot of assumptions about what the workforce knows or how bought in they are to a strategy or policy. And despite all the cool internal chat and social tools that have come along, to this day, nothing beats or is preferred more than good old email at 73%. Bill Murphy Jr. writes in Inc., the the business magazine, not just using a pen to write in Inc., that Perkbox Insights asked, given that preference, what are some of the things workers find highly annoying about email habits? These include mild pleasantries like, hope you're well, thanks in advance, please advise, best and sincerely. Now, let me give you a heads up as we continue. Just because these were cited by people as annoyances doesn't mean that they don't work or that they're not appropriate. Another study says using thanks in advance is actually the most effective way to guarantee getting a response. Other things they don't like are impatient repetition, suggesting that the sender is tired of waiting on you. Like, per our conversation, confirming receipt, just checking in, any updates on this, and as per my last email. They don't like it when you're too cheery, using smiley faces or saying, Happy Monday! Lack of personalization is apparently a problem, with phrases like, Hey, to whom it may concern, just looping in, and CCing people who don't need to be CC'd. Again, another study shows starting with, Hey, actually optimized response rates. Some don't like laziness, like, really long, unedited emails, not having an email signature, and no proofreading at all. But more than anything else, people still really hate all caps. Those folks over at Skyward should know a thing or two about how to organize content teams, right? So if you're feeling a little unorganized, Maybe you can use these tips Rose DeFremery gives us. One, there should be a centralized organizational structure. 35% of B2B marketers have two to five full-time internal people on content marketing, but 32% have no full-time person. Nobody. Nothing. But it doesn't matter because content is still needed and the expectations for content keep going up, even when it's not resourced. Marketing Profs says 44% of the most successful B2B brands have a centralized organizational structure so that efforts can be coordinated across the whole business. That way, the content marketing team aren't just chaotic order takers. There's a strategic direction. Ooh, I bet that just rang a bell with a lot of you. In many companies, content marketing people are indeed just chaotic order takers. Two, there's a documented content strategy. Because without that, even the best of the best can't really affect larger goals, and the content will fail, and that talent will probably leave. Three, use a trusted outsourced content partner. Come on, this came from Skyward. What else are they going to say? 
but it's true. The volume of content you need at the cadence you need it, in all the formats you need it, as creative as you need it, for every arm of the organization, I'm sorry, if you tell me you've got all content effectively handled 100% internally, I'll tell you you're lying to yourself. (laughs) Lastly, and quickly, were you enjoying Twitter's Audience Insights? That thing that gave you in-depth data about your followers like demographics, mobile usage, buyer behavior, all that good stuff. Yeah, well, kiss it goodbye because Twitter's killing it January 30th. Since 2015, this tool helped marketers plan and make more effective tweets and Twitter ads. In theory, it helped users get more relevant tweets. Who needs that, right? Well, here's the only maybe good news I can hypothetically tell you. They did add conversation insights to their media studio, in November. So maybe, maybe because Twitter isn't saying anything, they'll create something for Media Studio that's a solid replacement for Audience Insights. That's the Content Marketing Quickie for this week. Now that you've given up on all your other New Year's resolutions, it's time to stick to that one you made to subscribe to this program. You did make that, right? Back next week.